<laughs> but she's also a breeder of Westies, and she grooms other types of dogs, and she has a spa and dog daycare, yes, doggy daycare. Yes, grooming daycare. At, uh, just outside of Lincoln University, or it's, it is Lincoln it, University. Yes, it is. Very near where Toots is. You all know where Toots is. Oh, you're right, we all know that. Um, and she's gonna talk to us. She's, her dogs, her Westies, in 2007, she had the top Westie in the United States. There's one of the ribbons that won and won the wow. show, the best in show, won the best in show. Well, the best in show three times wow. in one year. Right. Wow. We've got three of those ribbons. So, and she's trained a lot of dogs for the ring, and she's trained a lot of dogs. Yeah. So she's going to talk to us about socializing your dog on and off leash today. So I'd like to welcome Denise Collins. Thank you. Inviting me, I'm very pleased to be here to speak with you about the dog park that we have. And um, I can tell you that I have been training dogs since 1993 for the show ring. And because I am a breeder, I have also trained puppies from day one and raised them up to the time they go to their new home so that they are easily acclimated to their home so that the transition would be a very positive one for their families and the dogs. Um, and in doing that, I understand how to train puppies and dogs and what works and what doesn't work. Part of that training is about socialization. And I think that the main problem in dog parks is that dogs are not properly socialized first before they go into the park. Um, and so let's, let's start with that. Um, socialization needs to be done not at the park, but in small increments in other locations outside of the park. In other words, if you have a dog that is very stressed when he goes to the park, he's a dog that you want to start by socializing him with one other dog somewhere else or taking him places where he can start to get comfortable with not just dogs but people. For instance, when I have a puppy and I want to get them socialized, I'll take them up to Pets and Friends and I will put them on a leash, which they've already been trained on, and I'll walk them around the store. And I make it a positive experience by having super good treats in my pocket. <laughs> and we're talking fresh chicken. <laughs> because that dog will be looking at you and be focused on you if you impress them that way and reward them for what they're doing well. Um, and in trainings for socialization, it's not something you'd want to do once a week. It's something you'd like to incorporate into your everyday uh, routine in a way that's good for you. If, if Pets and Friends is not a good place, maybe it would be a good place to take your dog within this community, that it would be a situation where they would be slowly acclimated to one or two dogs. Another thing that's important in getting your dog ready for the dog park is to teach them to sit, to stay, to come when called. These are very important because when you're in the dog park, there's a lot going on. And if your dog gets stressed out or a situation comes about where there's something that could happen that could go wrong, you can get your dog's attention. Um, and for that, for the average person, it's not something you can learn yourself. You really should look into getting a trainer to come to your house or go into a class. Um, I always recommend to my people who buy my puppies to take their puppies to a puppy class where there's other puppies, you know. So, um, so, so that's, that's the main basis 
that you really got to get before you go to the dog park. Another thing is if your dog is good on all these areas and you're in a dog park, you really have to understand dog behavior. Okay, and dog behavior is the red flag for you to act before a problem arises. For instance, you know, a dog that stands with his ears back is a dog that is ready to pounce, okay? So if you see that not just with your dog, but with someone else's dog in the park, get out of the park. Don't wait for something to happen. And there's so many things that can happen in a dog park. Um, you know, dogs' tails behind their legs, down, that dog is stressed, take them out of the park. You only want to go in that park when your dog is ready. And you also need to watch other people's dogs. And if they're not really working well with their dogs and they don't have control of their dogs, that is a potential of something happening really bad. And so you want to just get out of the park. So, you know, there's, it's a lot, it's a lot. I mean, I know that people, a lot of people go to the parks to socialize themselves to meet friends and people and, and, and you know have a good time socially, but that's not the place to do it with your dog. <coughs> because your dog needs your attention all the time and you need to be watching him all the time in the dog park. So when you take him to the park, just be sure that you're watching him at all times. Um, what else?